What's going on my light and ones, it's your boy Marcy MC back again. And today, it's a little bit of a different video. I mean, it's the same kind of video, but the topic's a little bit different or how the angle I'm going about the video is a little bit different. But before that, did you ever try to do a DIY, like do it yourself type of thing and you just mess it up? Like I was trying to cut the sleeves off this shirt and now you can literally, no, it's this side. You can literally tell that I tried to cut the sleeves off. So I mean like, it's not bad, but it's not the greatest. And you know the other thing that people try to do themselves and they're not the greatest at? Is Luffy trying to beat Kaido. Oh man, it's the third time now. You're about to go back up and fight him again. Hopefully Momonosuke transforms into an adult dragon, goes up, and you get to fight Kaido. Momonosuke wants to do it, so it's going to happen. But the thing I want people to realize is, Kaido may not lose this fight. And I want people to get this in their head that the raid may fail, hashtag shout out Mr. Morge, but not fail in the way that he may think, and not fail in, and not succeed in the way that they may think. See, the thing with Luffy is that now he has this idea of what things should look like. He has, he has uh, confidence in himself to go and win against Kaido the next time he fights. But maybe a thing that Kaido is still too much for them. And the actual end goal in Wano is the raid failing, but succeeding. And by that, I mean they're liberated from the rule of Orochi. Orochi's basically halfway out the door already. The only other person that needs to leave is Kaido. So what does that entail? So uh, Kaido dying, but if Kaido dies, that leaves a hole in the, uh, actually, yes, it will leave a hole in the Yonko system, but at the same time, it can be replaced easily by Kid, Law, Luffy, depending on how things play out. But what I'm starting to get at is that I don't think Kaido dies. You see, the more, see, the thing about Kaido is that we always get the one panel, the one panel, the one-liners that Kaido always does at the end of chapters when he's talking about the Yamato, Luffy, or just talking to himself. Like he says, looks like you couldn't be Joe Boy either, or I'm here in Wano because it is Wano, or like, I want you to be the guardian deity of Wano, or oh, that it stings me even more that you're supposed to be the guardian deity and that you want, that you portray yourself to be Odin to Yamato. Like there's so many things that Kaido says, he's just like, hold on, why, why, why is he saying all this? And the thing is, with Luffy's pattern of behavior, he fought Crocodile. Crocodile later on aids him in uh, at Marine Ford. He beats the Flamingo. Nothing happens after that. He beats Anel. Anel goes to the moon. Right? He beats Luchi. And now Luchi's with CP0. Right? But him and Katakuri, the way the fight went, it was almost like a talk no jutsu with just straight hands. They were throwing bows back and forth. They were basically evenly matched. I'm still going to give the nod to Katakuri. I know I can hear the arguments already, but it just is what it is. I think Katakuri is still stronger, and but the way things played out is perfect. The way that, and when you really think about that fight, the way it goes is that Katakuri's ideals and his beliefs were all put on the line, and he was like, so have you ever just been like exposed? Like someone exposes everything about you to the world and you're just like, wow, you feel vulnerable. Katakuri went through a vulnerable situation with Luffy and then that in itself, plus Luffy blooming hockey and seeing the same future as him, he understood that this man not only changed my perspective on everything, but he gave me a reason to become a better me and uh, accept myself. And with that, I feel the same thing is going to happen with Kaido, but not in the same, same realm. Like it's gonna be, uh, quite quite different and by that i mean he's going to realize that this man is the one that luffy is the one and he and by that i mean not the one that he's been looking actually he may be the one he's been looking for but he may be the one that can do what kaido wanted to do or people in the past wanted to do because kaido is looking for joy boy maybe for a fight or maybe for something else but what Kaido wants is the prosperity of Wano in a way. He said that Wano is going to be a, a weapons factory and I need you to stay here and guard it in my stead. Which means Kaido is trying to leave Wano no matter what. And the thing is that now that Momonosuke is transforming into an older Shogun, now that Momonosuke has portrayed himself to Kaido, the I'm Kozuki Momonosuke, that the dream in his head is his and not his father's anymore, and that he truly wants to be the Shogun of Wano and truly wants to open Wano's borders, yes, now it's Kaido to step aside. The thing is, we don't know why Kaido's in Wano. He said, because it's Wano. It could be the uh, spiritual significance. It could be the lore of the story significance. It could be the joy significance. It could be just the fact that it's Wano and secluded from everything else. We have no idea. But with Kaido, a lot of interesting questions come up because he has a connection to Joe Boy in some way, shape, or form. He chose Wano for a reason. He wants Yamato to be the guardian deity, and he despises Odin. And the fact that he despises Odin sort of plays to the fact that 
yes, you're just when the situation with him and Momonosuke saying you're just spewing the information of another man. It's not really your words. But if Momonosuke actually declares himself as Shogun again in a full adult dragon form in front of Kaido, his perspective on everything is going to change. His amusement, his enjoyment of the battle is going to rise even exponentially higher. Think about it. He's going to get Yamato's son claimed to be Odin, Kozuki Momonosuke, an adult dragon now, Luffy coming again after he thought he was defeated. All that in itself and the battle that Kaido's going to get the euphoric feeling that all that Kaido's going to achieve is going to be the reason why he leaves Wano he sees Wano is in a safe spot now I mean maybe not a safe spot but Wano's in a place that he does not have to be here anymore he knows that Wano has already lost the light the he's already lost the advantage of Wano he knows that Wano is in the safe hands now with Momonosuke as well as now he knows that it's not only in safe hands with Momonosuke but it's also being backed by Luffy and because of Luffy, because it ends up being Joy Boy and whatever connection Kaido has to him, that's going to play a factor in, in Kaido accepting that, yes, I don't want to be in Wano anymore. You guys can take Wano over in my stead or just take Wano over as, so I can leave. So my overall thing is that the battle will be a tough battle, but in the end, just how with Katakuri, yes, the thing with Katakuri is that, remember, Luffy beat Katakuri, but Luffy, Katakuri still got up first. Kaido... The, the gap between uh, Luffy and Kaido, and Kaido is still tremendous. Even though Momonosuke is an adult dragon, he's going to do absolutely nothing. Think about it. If he does transform into an adult dragon, say he gets an hybrid form or an, he stays in his adult form. One, his adult form is going to be not... He's not going to be able to fully control his adult form because he's still a child in an adult's body. He can already he can barely control his dragon form already before in the transformations. So just imagine now as an adult dragon trying to climb or try to fly or trying to fight. So the only way he can possibly help against Kaido would basically be in his dragon form because he can disturb, cause a disturbance with boar breaths or just literally just being a huge ass giant that's flying around annoying Kaido in the background. Or maybe Momonosuke tries to hold up Onigashima. Who knows? But the thing with that is that Kaido seeing Momonosuke transform into the dragon that he is changes everything. Completely changes everything. And this is why I think the raid fails too. So we saw Chopper able to create a rumble ball that can manipulate the genetics of his devil fruit or just basically a manipulate his uh, his devil fruit in one way shape or form to uh be it, so he's able to create more forms so why wouldn't someone like dr vegapunk who has more knowledge than chopper and more knowledge than caesar and caesar helped chopper extend his rumble ball so why isn't it the case that dr vegapunk can also make artificial rumble balls for the people he's working for hence the dragons i mean the dragons the uh the uh beast pirates the Beast Pirates already have artificial Dark Fruits. Why couldn't they have, or at least the Total Robo members have, an artificial Rumble Ball to help them awaken? We saw, the last time we saw an awakened uh, zone was in Impel Down. We know Vegapunk has a connection. And the way they went about, it did not look like it was a perfected zone type of awakened. Like a perfected uh, awakened zone. It looked more artificial. So maybe a thing that Vegapunk actually possibly gave them a Rumble Ball type effect, and they also do the same thing. If Chopper's able to create, uh, if Chopper's able to administer a uh, medicine that can double your pain but let you be completely healthy in the moment, or the Minx, I mean, the Minx had it, but at the same time, obviously, Chopper administering it. If they can do that, I don't see why not the ancient zones. Remember, they're ancient zones. The normal zones already have like increased, be uh, increased speed, strength, durability, all that. Ancient zones have increased speed, durability, possibly regeneration. Obviously, not regen, but like obviously, they can uh, bounce back much faster than everyone else. Couple that with possibly some of them being awakened, I don't see some of them being down for long. It may be a fact that some of them are, are perfected awakens and some of them are not. Maybe all these are perfected awakened. Husu, Black Maria, and Sasaki are all false awakenings. Who knows? But I like the idea. So I don't think the raid is over. I think everything is going swimmingly, but that's what Oda wants. Like, I don't think the raid's going to fail to the point where the only Gashima falls in the flower capital, but I don't think they defeat the Yonkos they're supposed to. And I think things happen that changes the course of the One Piece universe. And that being, I don't think Big Mom is defeated by Kid in Law, and I think she possibly gets Otama and leaves. Gets the Pontyglyph skin, gets Otama, and leaves. And the reason why I think that's going to happen, it's going to end up happening, oh wow, something in my eye. It's going to end up happening in the Pontyglyph room. I just get in that vibe that Big Mom finds the Pontyglyph, Otama, uh, Usopp, Nami are there because they're running away from the other Beast Pirates. They find the Pontyglyph, Big Mom is there because Onigashi begins to collapse. I already talked about that in my last video with Caribou. But Big Mom finds the Pontyglyph and gets Otama and leaves. And that only not only leaves more people there but also opens the door for what is supposed to happen afterwards right so what i think is going to happen now that the world of system is gone the the world powers are going to be split and the narrative is going to be that luffy law and kid drove out the two drove away two yonkos kaido and big mom and then allied with the other worst gen so it's going to be the marines 
the four Yonko, because the four Yonkos, are, I don't think all the four Yonkos are going down. I think Kaido remains with his Beast Pirates army and leaves with Onigashima as a whole, most likely. Or maybe half of Onigashima, but I think the Beast Pirates leave. So it's going to be Kaido, Big Mom, Shanks, and Blackbeard as the Yonko. And the worst gen encompasses the other form of the world power. Because Luffy decides he's not a Yonko anymore. He's already conquered the Yonko. So it might be a thing where the worst gen becomes another part of the great power in the, wo in the world. And that actually makes the split of what is eventually the world powers and the reason why i feel like that way is because i don't think big mom is going to get taken down i just don't think i, don't, I just don't see it kind of curry said you're gonna come back to defeat big mom they said yes gonna happen i believe it gonna happen kind of losing to everyone and then kind of dying and then he's dealt for going somewhere this and the third i ain't seeing it 1v1 bet on kind of strongest creature in the world i think it remains the same kind of remains the strongest creature and he goes off into the distance because he finally realized I can leave Wano. Wano is as it should be. Joy Boy came this end the third or whatever, however it plays out. Kaido realizes Wano is not the place for me to be anymore. I can leave now. And Kaido leaves. And that's why I also think that Yamato and Momonosuke actually stay in Wano. And that another person that's in Wano right now becomes Naka Nakama. Sorry. Because of what they do and the feet they drop down. That was my last video too. Caribou. Each Onigashima allows them to actually save the flower capital, this and the third, and he joins the Straw Hats. I think Momonosuke possibly stays Shogun because now he's older. Him being on the Straw Hats might be cute. When I say cute, it would be a pretty funny dynamic because Momonosuke is now a person that can't control his body. So that adds the quirkiness and his prefer perverted uh, behavior is out the window. He can't do that anymore. Think about it. He can't do that because now he's older. So like him trying to like get in the bath with Nambi Robin, that ain't going to happen. He might get a kick in the face by Sanji. I mean, that would be pretty... I, I mean, I like the dynamic if Momonosuke did join the crew. And it may be a thing that he does join the crew and possibly gets de-aged by Julie Bonnie, which is actually a thing. And the fact that uh, the fact that Shinobu said that he can't go back to as being a kid almost solidifies the fact that Julie Bonnie is either going to show up in Wano or he's go she's going to interact with Momonosuke. And already it's like a thing that Julie Bonnie has like ties to the, uh, the Marines. So it may be a thing that that all happens. Because post Wano, say Kaido's driven out, this is a narrative. Luffy Kid Law drove out to Yonko, Big Mom and Kaido, as then opened the borders of a country that's been closed off for so long that has a military might in the samurai that the world government was wary of. Tell me that's not that's not splitting. That's not, tell me that's not a power equivalent to possibly the Yonkos in the in the worldview in the Marines. It definitely is. To us, we know that the limitations what they are, but to the world, they're like, yo. So this man, this man's almost Roger like. But at the same time, there's a lot to happen in the, in the whole story. I just don't think Kaido and Big Mom actually go down. I think the raid fails, but the raid succeeds. Succeeds, And by fail, I mean Kaido Big Mom don't die. They end up leaving, but Wano's borders are open and the New Dawn actually comes in the reign of Orochi and Kaido are over. But tell me what you guys think down in the comments. But like I say at the end of every single video, please leave a like, the subscribe button, and the bell button to come back next time and remain enlightened, y'all. Peace.